All right, let's take a look at the Azure SQL family. When we say SQL, we're talking about Microsoft's version of SQL. And uh, if you search SQL, you'll see a bunch of stuff here, even more than this. And it can get really confusing, but you absolutely need to know this for the exam. You need to know the difference between these uh, three main services. So at the top, you have SQL Server on Azure Virtual Machines or SQL You'll just see like VM for an SQL VM a lot. When you need OS level control and access, when you need to lift and shift your workloads to the cloud, when you have an existing SQL license and you want to save money via the Azure hybrid benefit, this is when you're gonna use that, okay? If you've never heard the term lift and shift, the idea is that on your on-premise environment, you're running a virtual machine, that is your database, uh, and you can literally save a virtual image, import that into Azure and it runs exactly how it did on your on-premise. So uh, you don't get a lot of the advantages of the cloud, but the idea is it's the easiest way to get onto the cloud, right? The next option is SQL Managed Instance. This is when you have an existing database you want to modernize. It's the broadest SQL Server engine compatibility, highly available dis disaster recovery, automated backups, ideal for most migrations to cloud. So the thing is that if you're gonna do a lift and shift, um, you can you can uh, kind of go to SQL Manage, so you probably have to do a transformation, some kind of like ETL job or something to go into here. But the idea is that there's a lot of different versions of um, of uh, MS SQL depending on how old it is and stuff like that. So if you aren't going to be bringing your license or need OS level, you really want to be using this one because you get all the built-in scalability stuff, right? The third one is Azure SQL Database. This is a fully managed SQL database designed to be fault tolerant, built in disaster recovery. High, uh, it's highly available, designed to scale, uh, and it's the best option. Um, but uh, again, you know, if you have an older database, maybe you could do a transformation to it. Uh, and then underneath, it has SQL servers. I thought this was a fourth option, but really when you go to Azure SQL and launch it, you actually have to create a, a server because you can have multiple SQL servers associated to a database. And there's things called like, what's it called? Like Elastic Pool or something like that. So uh, that's just the underlying server for the Azure SQL database. It's not a service in itself, but it's just a component of that service, okay? Even though you can go in the UI and, and see a list there, it makes it really, really, really confusing. But yeah, there you go.